Today we are looking at how to remove ticks safely. There's again a lot of misconceptions out there, so whatever you do, don't burn them, smother them, or crush them. Let's cover it all. This is Destructive Creativity. We exist for you, for science, and for fun. So let's get going, hit that subscribe button, and the like button. You know you want to. Or at least I want you to. Whatever, let's go. Last week we covered just how nasty ticks are, and they are terrible. They carry a lot of nasty stuff you don't want inside your body. So let's uh, cover exactly what the best way to remove a tick is. I'm going to be getting my information directly from the Center of Disease Control in the States or from Health Canada up here in Canada. So there's a lot of myths out there. Myth number one, you should just let it do its course and then fall off on its own. No, don't let the tick suck your blood. If you see one that has attached, no matter when you see it, remove it. Because if you don't, then it's going to be transferring a lot more diseases. Couple of the things that you shouldn't do. You should not burn it. Don't put a lighter near it because it's going to stress out and spit into your blood. And the spit is where a lot of the bacteria reside. If you see a tick on your arm or on your skin, don't take your fingers and go like this and squish it and pull it out. Because again, you're squishing everything that's inside that tick into your blood. Don't cover it with nail polish. Don't smother it so that it's lacking oxygen and needs to come out because guess what? That's pretty stressful. So what's the best way to do this? Well, according to the CDC, you could take fine tipped tweezers, grasp as close to the skin as possible, and gently pull outward. You don't want to twist it, you don't want to crush it, you just gently pull it outwards. If part of the tick breaks off, that's actually fine. Try and get it out as best you can, but it don't just start digging into your flesh to break off a chunk of mouth parts, because any damage that has been done has already been done, and the skin will heal, and eventually the tick mouth parts will work its way out. After you remove the tick, there might be part of the mouth part still in your skin somewhere, or it might be completely out. Either way, you want to wash your skin very well. You want to clean it with soap and water or with some kind of alcohol. What should you do next when you brush a tick off your skin or you remove it with tweezers? Well, anyone that has done that, you'll know that it's really hard to kill a tick. You can step on it, you can smash it, you can smush it, and it's still gonna be alive. So if you want to dispose of it, simply put it in a plastic bag or flush it down a toilet, you could wrap it in tape, that would kill it as well. However, it is a good idea to go a step farther. So we have very limited information on where the black-legged tick exists, and the black-legged tick is the one that carries Lyme disease. So if you are bitten by a tick, the official recommendation by the Government of Canada is to mail the tick for testing. This testing will not help you know if you have Lyme disease, but it will help the overall scientific community to know where the ticks are spreading, how far north, how far east, how far west, etc, etc. All of the information in Canada here can be found on the Government of Canada's website. Typically each province has their own testing facilities, sometimes they want different types of ticks mailed to specific locations. So check for your own area, if you find a tick on you, take it off safely using tweezers, pulling, not twisting or crushing, and then mail that little sucker off to the nearest testing facility. I'm Jonathan Allers with Destructive Creativity. Thanks for being here. Next week, I promise we are getting back into scientific experiments. I'm going to be joined with my co-host Eliana again, and it's going to be amazing. All right, see you next time. Bye.